Hey guys, welcome to Grad Coach TV, where we demystify and simplify the oftentimes confusing world of academic research. My name's David, and today I'm chatting to one of our trusted coaches, Alexandra, about the golden thread. We're going to be talking about what it is and why it's so important. Like always, today's discussion is based on one of our many, many articles over at the Grad Coach blog. So, if you'd like to find out more about the golden thread and how to use it in your research, be sure to head over to gradcoach.com forward slash blog. Also, if you're looking for a helping hand with your dissertation, thesis, or research project, be sure to check out our one-on-one -on -one private coaching service, where one of our coaches will be with you every step of the research journey, holding your hand. For more information and to book a free consultation, head over to gradcoach.com. Hey Alexandra, welcome to the Coachcast. As always, it's super great to have you here with us tonight. Hi David, thanks so much for the invite. I always love coming on and chatting research with you. So Alexandra, it's time we're doing it. We're diving into the golden thread. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what it is, why it's important, and how to use it in your research project. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's just start with it. What is the golden thread, Alexandra? Yes. So I feel like as novice researchers, one day we are doing our research, we've never heard of this concept of the golden thread, and then suddenly it's all we hear. So yeah. essentially what the golden thread is, it's composed of three elements for your research, your research aim, your research objectives, and your research questions. So why these three elements that compose your golden thread are important is that above all, they identify the boundaries of your study. They, they identify what you're working in and what you won't go outside to. So in that mm -hmm. sense, they also help keep your paper together or focused or aligned. And also it allows you to identify if you are being thorough, cohesive and coherent with your project goals within those boundaries. It also goes by a range of other names and slightly different arguments, but you can call it your key arguments, your elevator pitch, your key message, research narrative. There's a whole range of ways that it is utilized, but broadly speaking, it's the same idea. It's what's driving your research. So now that we know what the golden thread is, I think maybe we should take a little bit of a dive into the specific components of that golden thread. And the first one is the research aim. Alexandra, what is the research aim and how do we identify it? So as I mentioned before, the golden thread has those three elements to it. And so this first one, the research aim, this is the main goal or the overarching purpose mm -hmm. of your dissertation or thesis. And what makes this aim an aim is that it's a high level statement of what you're seeking to achieve. And so sometimes this high level statement we could see might look something like this research aims to, this research sought to, the aim of the study was to, the study planned to. It's kind of a formulaic statement that, it, that should be identifiable. And so why we need this high level statement for the aim is to assess largely if the research that you, you said you set out to do, the aim you set out to do is what you actually ended up doing mm. at the end of your study. And so why this is helpful is that it's a good way to find out if what you've set out to do has been accomplished in the study or not, like I said. And as I kind of alluded to, what you say in the, the research aim in the introduction, you should be able to find its mirror self in the conclusion to see if that aim was achieved or not. That's really helpful. And a quick tip, if you're working through a paper and want to get a high level summary of what the paper is doing, keep an eye out for that aim statement in the introduction, see what it's talking about, and then pick that up again in the findings and discussion section, because there should be a statement that's very much in line with that aim statement, providing an answer. And if you take those, that's the core of what the paper set out to do. That's often enough the novel findings that they've found. So that's been really helpful to define what it is, but maybe it'll be good to just get some examples. So Alexandra, do you have any qualitative examples of a good research aim? Absolutely. So with qualitative, it's going to be different than quantitative, which you'll mention, but a sample study could be having the topic of employee experiences of digital transformation in retail HR. So that's the topic. And now we want that high level statement, our research aim. 
So maybe that's something like this research aims to explore employee experiences of digital transformation in retail HR. And so kind of the key words here are that this study aims to explore, okay, kind of one of those common qualitative aim verbs. Um, experiences is pretty typical as an aim in qualitative. And so with that high level statement, we're able to see what this research study is set out to do so that later on, we have to make sure that we've followed up on that. And as the reader, you should be able to identify if they did what they set out to do. That's a really great example. And if I were to think up a quantitative example right now, let's say you're doing a study on graduate engineering students and their well-being, and you're interested to see whether student support or self-care are factors playing a role in that well-being. You might use an aim statement like this study set out to assess the interaction between student self-care and support services on well-being in engineering graduate students. What we've got there is all of the key variables of interest, the well-being, self-care, and student support. We also are introducing the idea of an introduction and prediction. And so we've got all those key ideas. You know it's quantitative when they're talking about connections between variables and predictions and relationships, correlations. So keep an eye out for those kind of words as well when trying to identify the type of research you're doing. So now that we've covered what a research aim is, let's move on to the next aspect of that golden thread, which is the research objective. Alexandra, what is the objective and why do we need it? Yes, so typically your research of aims and your research objectives are similar, but mm. the difference is, is that as opposed to research aims, the research objectives are a bit more practically oriented, whereas the mm. research aim was a high level statement. So these objectives, they're looking at specific things that you'll be doing to achieve that aim that we previously stated. Mm. So to do so, they break down the research aims into more specific actionable tasks. And these research objectives also describe the actions that you'll be taking and the specific things that you'll investigate in order to achieve and answer that research aim from the previous part of the golden thread. And so when assessing existing research to help get an idea of what to do for your own research objectives, you use research objectives to evaluate how the researchers broke down the research aim into achievable steps to conduct their research. So you should look for those achievable steps when you're evaluating existing research. That's really helpful to get an idea of what the objective is, but how do we use that in our own research and how do we determine these? So like a lot in research, researchers and educators have developed some kind of helpful tips and tricks for different parts. So for the research objectives, there's a nice acronym you can use called SMART. So what this is essentially saying is that starting with your research aim, like I mentioned, you need to break it down into actionable tasks that are your objectives. But how do you do that? If you follow this SMART acronym, your objectives need to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So as you are looking at your research aim and determining how to break down um, your research objectives from that into those steps, keep in mind that your research objectives need to be smart. That's so helpful. And it's really a good way to think about taking that somewhat high level complex statement, breaking it down into the steps you're going to need to do to answer that aim. I think right now it'd be really great to, again, go back to those aims we had earlier and do that breakdown right here and right now. Okay, so if we go back to our qualitative example about employee experiences and digital transformation in HR, we had our aim in the previous step and now we wanna break that down into actionable tasks to make our research objectives. So if our research aim before was that this research aims to explore employee experiences of digital transformation in retail HR, I want to break that down to maybe a first research objective of 
observing the retail HR employees throughout the digital transformation. A second one could be assessing employee perceptions of digital transformation in retail HR. And still a third one could be identifying the barriers and facilitators of digital transformation in retail HR. And so what you may have noticed with these three examples is that they all kind of start with an action verb, observe, assess, identify, and this is very common for research objectives because, as we mentioned, your objectives should be actionable, putting your aim into action that you can actually address in your study. That's a really great coverage of the qualitative side of things. Quantitative side of things is not much different. We're going to be taking that aim that we have. In this case, it was this study set out to assess the interaction between student self-support, student self-care, on well-being in engineering graduate students. We're now going to break that up into specific objectives. And maybe the first one would be to determine whether student self-care predicts well-being scores in engineering students. Our second objective might be to determine whether student support predicts the well-being of engineering students. And our third and final objective might be to assess the interaction between student self-care and student support on well-being of engineering graduate students. So what you might have noticed there is in quantitative research, often enough, our objectives are very strongly associated with our variables of interest. We have three core measures that we're interested in, and we kind of have objectives that relate to each of those. We also used really active words like predict, assess, determine. You'll also come across words like prediction, correlation, quantify. These are really active words that are going to engage with that variable of interest. So now that we've dealt with the research aim and the research objectives, we're really going to get into the research question portion of the golden thread. And Personally, it's the part that I feel is most important. Alexandra, what are the research questions and how do we get to them? Yes, so this is the third aspect of the golden thread, as you mentioned. And so what your research questions are, these are the specific questions that your dissertation or your thesis will seek to answer. And what's nice about the research objectives and the research questions is that the questions typically relate directly to those objectives we just talked mm. about. And these research questions also tend to act as the driving force throughout your dissertation or thesis. And so what that means is once you've identified what your research question is, and you've mentioned that in your introduction, we should see that research question again throughout your whole project, from the literature review to the methodology and onward. And so like our example with the research objectives, if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable with knowing how to formulate your own research question at first, look to existing research, um, look for their research questions. And so like the research aim and the research objective, it's a good way to find out if you look at existing research, if what the researcher said in the introduction is what they answered in the findings and discussion and conclusion, excuse me. So what's important about this research question is that it should be central throughout the paper from beginning to end. I can't agree more. The research questions really are that core idea that is mm -hmm. keeping everything together. And so if we've identified it in other studies, how do we develop it based on our own research objectives? So for your own research, you should use your research aim statement, that high level statement, to develop the questions that you need to answer that aim, okay? So with that said, typically your research questions must align with your research objectives, but that's not always the case. And so I know we just said do this to do that and there's, here's an exception, but let me explain why using the example we gave before. So in that qualitative example of uh, employee experiences of digital transformation in retail HR, if you'll remember, our first objective was to observe these retail HR employees throughout the digital transformation. So there's not really a research question that can come from this objective because this objective is actually um, representative of a step along the way to answering other research questions. 
Okay, there's not really a research question that is to answer for that objective. However, for that second objective that we had about employee perceptions, a research question could answer this objective. And it might sound something like, how do employees perceive digital transformation in retail HR? And then that third objective of the barriers and facilitators, what a research question might look like for this is, what are the barriers and the facilitators of digital transformation in retail HR? That's really helpful. And that idea of an objective sometimes not translating mm -hmm. to a research question does also come up in the quantitative research, particularly if your research objectives are about collecting data or mm -hmm. determining something, right? Mm -hmm. But in our example that we suggested, there were pretty good linkages between the objectives to potential questions. So for our first research objective, an associated research question might be something along the lines of, does student self-care predict the well-being score of engineering graduate students? Mm -hmm. Again, we're asking a question that's very similar to what we phrased in terms of the research objective, but we're looking at that question. Similarly, for research question two, you might say, does student support predict the well-being score of engineering students. Again, the exact same pattern. And for the last research objectives, here we might have a slightly different wording, but again, it's taking that objective and moving it across. So mm -hmm. do student self-care and student support interact mm -hmm. when predicting well-being in engineering graduate students? An important thing to mention when it comes to quantitative research, particularly if you're using inferential statistics, is your research questions and your hypotheses are almost always really intertwined. Your hypotheses are statements that are answers to your research questions, but they're not just statements that come from nowhere. You're basing that statement or that prediction based on what you've seen in the literature. So just to take one of those examples, if we're talking about student self-care predicting well-being, you might have a hypothesis of student self-care positively predicts well-being scores of engineering graduate students. We've got an expectation, we've got a direction, and we've got the variables of interest. And then we would do an associated test to assess that. Now, that's a little bit of an aside, but it's an important thing to mention because in quantitative research, you've got to have hypotheses if you're doing inferential stats. Mm -hmm. Now that we've covered the parts of the golden thread, let's maybe talk about how we actually utilize the golden thread. And the first place we want to be using the golden thread is to really ensure we're maintaining alignment throughout our research project. And the examples we've used before represent really good alignment. There's a nice flow of information from the aim to the objectives to the research question. Everything seems to move nice and smoothly and tells a cohesive story. What would be an example, Alexandra, of maybe a poorly aligned golden thread? So if we take the same qualitative topic that I mentioned before, you know, of employee experiences of digital transformation and retail HR. If we have that topic and we say that our research aim, that high level statement is this research aims to explore employee experiences of digital transformation in retail HR. We say that that's our research aim, but then we follow it up with research questions or question, excuse me, of how do managers in retail HR influence mm. digital transformation. That would be an example of a poorly aligned research aim and research question. And so why are they poorly aligned? Well, first of all, in the aim, I said we were looking at ex employee experiences. In the question, I said managers, okay? So we have a different population. Mm -hmm. In the aim, I said employee experiences but in the question I said, influence digital transformation. So we had experiences, but in the question we have perceptions. And then finally, we are using the verb influence, okay, rather than explore. So there's kind of three problems there with alignment, namely the different population, okay, and perceptions versus experiences, 
and influence rather than explore. These are two different agendas. That's really helpful and really puts that into perspective from a qualitative view. If we were to do the same for that quantitative example we've been talking about before, student support, self-care, and well-being in engineering graduate students, maybe we have the aim of the study set out to assess the interaction between support, exercise, and self-care on well-being in engineering graduate students, right? Mm -hmm. We've slightly changed that from the last time. We've added in exercise. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we've got alignment throughout. A poor alignment in research questions would be leaving out one of those key variables. Mm -hmm. So if we'd used the same research questions as before, but not included one relating to exercise's relationship to well-being, or the interaction between exercise and the other variables, that would represent misalignment. We're almost forgetting a core aspect of our aim. So we've spoken about using the golden thread to help with aligning your research, but it can be more useful than that. We can also use the golden thread to help us in the write-up process. So Alexandra, maybe give us a bit of detail about how that fits together. Yes. So not only do you have to do the study, but then you have to write about the study so that it's mm. coherent to a reader and obviously your panel and your markers. So when you're doing your write up, whenever you're writing or making designs, design decisions, excuse me, always check back on your golden thread to make sure that you're not going off topic, like the examples of the poorly aligned um, mm. aims and, and questions or down a rabbit hole. And so why should we care to do this is that when you're writing up and you're paying attention to your golden thread, it helps with the structure. So mm. what things that you should keep in mind are that the golden thread, those three aspects, they should appear in every chapter of your project. So if you don't have it in one of your chapters or you don't see it in something you're reading, there's a problem. So another nice thing is that your golden thread, it should bookend your chapters or come up in the summarizing sections of your chapters. And so why should we care to do this? Well, Unfortunately, readers don't always read your whole document. So having the golden thread at either the beginning and the end or the end, it helps the lazy reader follow your research. One of the other areas that happens to be really improved by having a good handle on your golden thread is when you're presenting or defending your research. If you've been keeping in mind your golden thread, been really working to incorporate it, make sure it's cohesive throughout your design, throughout your write-up, by the time it gets to presenting, you're going to have all of those ideas really solid in your mind. So you will have a key message in mind that'll tell you what you set out to do, what you did, what you found, and what that means and all of those really engages with that golden thread that you've done mm -hmm. so don't deny the power of the golden <laughs> thread and make sure you're engaging with it throughout your research project it's only going to strengthen your writing and your research going yes. forward and i think if i could add one thing to that it'll help when you're trying to explain your research because when you get to the point where you're defending your research you should know your study backwards and forwards mm. in a way that you could explain it to an intelligent layperson. That's really true. And we want to be able to tell it to your mom, tell it to your sister, <laughs> tell it to your best friend who's studying something completely different. Mm -hmm. A good golden thread will allow you to get that idea across really quickly and succinctly. Alexander, I'm so glad we got to do the golden thread today and really engage with it. It's been super great having you here with us again. Yes, it's been so fun. It's such an important topic, and I'm glad we were able to actually do a video just about it. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this episode of Grad Coach TV. Remember, if you're looking for more information about the Golden Thread, what it is, and how to use it, be sure to head over to the blog at gradcoach.com forward slash blog. There, you can also get access to our free dissertation and thesis writing mini course which will give you all the information you need to get started on your research journey. Then don't forget, if you're looking for a helping hand with your dissertation, thesis, or research project, be sure to check out our one-on-one -on -one private coaching service, where you can work with one of our friendly coaches, just like Alexandra. To get all the information and to book a free consultation, head over to gradcoach.com.